Hello, and welcome to the latest installment of the ARIS Innovator Demo Series. We're going to talk this morning about technical documentation with the ARIS PLM platform. A quick note about the demo series, it runs for 30 minutes and features all demo with no sales pitch. Twice a month, typically bi-weekly, we show you a different capability of the ARIS platform. Once the demo series is complete, you can always go to our website, www.aris.com slash demo series, to view the past demos as well as any upcoming demos. We have on the line today, Kevin Richard, Product Manager at Aris. Kevin, take it away. Thank you, Nicole, and welcome everybody. This product uh, that I'm about to show you has been um, out there for a couple of years and I've given this presentation a number of times. I decided to change things up a little bit for the demo today, uh, but before I do that, I want to just to give a brief overview of the product uh, to provide some context and uh, describe some of its uh, some of its major features, I'll follow that up with a demo and then um, talk briefly about what is in active active development now and what we're planning for the future. Okay, so Aris technical documentation. Um, what are the kinds of documents that uh, we target for, for this kind of functionality? Well, given that this is a PLM environment, we're, we're targeting documents that are about that which you use Innovator to manage. So your product, your recipe management, your process management from a manufacturing standpoint. Whatever it is you're using PLMs, in particular Innovator, uh, to manage. I'll go through this uh, within the demo and when I talk about structured versus unstructured document documentation, but these documents tend to have uh, a well-defined structure where there is some consistency with respect to format in content and in style. And although uh, I'm sure at least in the near future there will always be a place for printed material, a uh, majority of documentation uh, is delivered electronically and um, consumed by people with smartphones or, or, or various mobile devices, uh, certainly on a computer. And finally, uh, I talk about topics-based or modular information. By topics-based, I'm talking about specific or discrete content, and by modular, I'm talking about the ability of this information to be reused. I also talk about ARIS technical documentation application as being PLM based or a, a, a PLM based authoring environment. And for one, this is built from the ground up within Innovator. It has a, a very similar look and feel. Uh, it can leverage the core features of Innovator including access control, change management, um, version management through workflow and lifecycle and things like that. It is web-based like all of our applications, so there's no client installation. Uh, as you update or as we update the software, uh, your clients have the latest version. And finally, you can automate or reference content directly from your managed business items within Innovator. So you can keep your technical documentation in sync with the other information that you manage within Innovator. All documents are based on some document schema, and this, this gets to that structured content that I was referring to earlier, and I'll show you what that means in the demo. Uh, and uh, they have some underlying style. You configure both the document schema and the style. We have some out-of-the-box capability, but you're free to determine or, or, or design your own documents as, uh, for content and the way it looks. And finally, we have the ability to support the export of XML, HTML, and PDF. All right, so let's uh, go into the demo here. And for today, um, I had decided, rather than show you some of the other canned documents that I have in the past, that I would take an existing document, in this case, the ARIS Technical Documentation User's Guide, not only do I think it's appropriate, but I also think it's representative of the kinds of documents that you would use a tool like this to create and manage. So on the right here I have a PDF. This is our user's guide 
and uh, in the interest of full disclosure, this uh, was not created with our tool, but I'll show you what this document would look like if you did use our tool to create it. All right. On the left, I have Innovator. If you haven't seen Innovator before, uh, it is a web product. It looks like a desktop application here, but I am in fact running within a browser. Uh, in this case, I'm using Chrome. This is our main screen here. We get a number of menus and, and toolbars to access various functions. And if you install technical documentation, you'll have a talk element here. This area to the left here is what we refer to our, as our talk or our table of contents. And you can access uh, the various documents that you created by uh, this particular link here. All right, so let me just describe this, uh, this user's guide here. This is our own format. Any of the documentation that we deliver with our product is delivered in a very similar format. There is a title page, there's some boilerplate information here, copyright data, there's a table of contents, um, there's uh, a page here that talks about how to contact us, and uh, there's some uh, description here of, of the various styling and uh, format that we use within our document. And finally, we get into the, the document content itself. Uh, in this particular document, there are five main sections. Um, they start with an overview. Uh, if you look at the kind of content in here, you'll notice that there's tabular data. There are numbered lists, there are bulleted lists. I have sections in here, each of them are numbered. There are section levels that are numbered appropriately as well. There's different uh, types of styling here, different size fonts, uh, margins are set up. Uh, for the PDF document, there's a header, uh, there's page numbers, there's uh, some copyright information, a logo is on every page and so on and so forth. Every main section starts on a new page. Uh, it has a title, it is numbered, it has a, um, a borderline that separates that text from the particular content within the chapter or within this uh, section. Uh, there are graphics. Uh, each graphic can have a caption that is centered underneath. Various uh, paragraphs here. I'm just scrolling down here just to show you the kinds of content here. This is about, uh, it's about a 41 page document. So not small, but certainly not large either. Uh, again, I tried to find something that was representative of uh, uh, any typical technical document. Okay, so what I did was I had made the decision to break the content of this document up into individual documents. And I did that by chapter. So this, in, in this document here, what's labeled uh, section three, creating content, is an individual chapter. And I did that because I wanted to, first of all, I think it's good practice. Uh, and second of all is when you think about using technical documentation, you need to think about how is this content going to be authored? Is it going to be separated out? Are there particular uh, users within your environment with particular expertise that uh, are responsible for any given section. Certainly some of the front matter, uh, it can be reused because it's consistent, at least it, it is in this case. It offers some ability of, um, uh, for content to be generated at the same time or authored at the same time through multiple multiple users, okay? So uh, I just made the decision to structure this based on chapter, and that's what I'll go through right now. So any technical document in our system has an individual row here. Uh, if you're familiar with it, Innovator, you can add whatever kind of metadata additional information you want to use to keep track of your documentation. I'm just showing you the out-of-the-box solution here. We've got every document has a number, it has a name, it can have a classification, uh, and it's based on some underlying schema. I won't have a chance to cover that today. In this case, I created a separate one called User's Guide, and I'll show you what that means in just a moment. All right, so on the right, I've got section three. It's labeled Creating Content. Let me show you the equivalent technical document here. I double-click it 
on that row in the uh, what we call our search grid and it brings up the particular document. Uh, every document has a form view which shows you the uh, underlying metadata. Again, you can add to this. You can add related content. Uh, uh, that's just part of standard innovator configuration. Every technical document has an editor view. Um, and within the editor, you've got a number of context sensitive uh, toolbars that, uh, that show up on this level here. On the left, you have uh, what we call our tree. This shows you the structure of the document. And on the right, you have the content of the document itself rendered appropriately. Okay? So using this document on the right here for style guide uh, and, and layout, I uh, chose a very similar set of fonts. You can see my chapter title here, what I'm calling a chapter, uh, is labeled. It's got a, uh, a bar underneath it, just like our document. The um, section titles are equivalently um, styled and positioned. These are the graphics. Uh, I decided to uh, add caption text here as well. Uh, as I scroll this document, you can see I have the very similar content here, um, all the way down. Now, I did this by uh, just copying the text over, but the editing process is um, based on sort of deliberate or specific adding or, 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 or placing individual nodes or types of nodes. This speaks to the structure nature of this. So for example, you notice I selected a paragraph here. Uh, that position of that node in, within the whole structure of the document is, is highlighted in the tree to the left here. Anything I select here is highlighted on the right and vice versa. So if I wanted to add more text, first of all, I'd have to lock it assuming I have the permissions to do so. I can either, by, by referencing this particular node, this paragraph, if I hit enter, uh, I get a list of all the kinds of contents that I can add at this location within the document. Okay, so your document schema is going to dictate uh, and is going to control what your authors can do. So in this case, I can add all this kind of stuff. So if I add a paragraph, uh, I can just uh, some text, okay. Um, I can right click over here, right click in the tree, add other kinds of content. In this case, I'll add a note. All right, you notice that some text was already created for me. The formatting has been predefined. A note. If I wanted to add uh, graphics, uh, I set something called a graphic block. All right, so I want, in addition to an image, I want to be able to add a caption. If I insert, uh, use the insert operation here, it tells me exactly what I can add. Uh, I'll start by uh, adding a graphic. In this case, I'm just going to duplicate the one that I have down here, which is this one. Okay, uh, after the graphic, I can add a label. And if you noticed, I'm not setting the style of any of this. I'm not setting the position of the cursor. I'm not determining any kind of layout whatsoever. All of that is centrally managed. And we do that so that as your authors create content, they're doing so consistently. So every document is going to look the same. Every document is going to have a consistent structure. And this one is um, uh, buttons, right? So I didn't uh, type the table. The, the text figure, I didn't even give it a number. All, right? all that's done automatically by the system. Again, this is um, to maintain consistency uh, throughout all the documents. And this is just something that I just set up for this particular application. We have out of the box configurations that you can use and you can tailor them uh, as little or as much as you choose. Okay, so that's the editing process. I'm just going to go ahead and remove this stuff. Uh, because I don't want it in this document. And I've gone through and I've created all the content here, all the graphics. This is just one particular chapter all the way through the end. It's probably about 20 pages or so. You can see it's got a number of graphics in it, uh, various notes. There's different types of notes. Uh, one of them is just a note. One of them is a warning. It's got different styling. 
Uh, and I use the same process to author content within uh, any document. I don't want to save that. Okay, so this is the um, this is a, a typical example of a document. It looks this way in the editor. When I publish this, I can have it look the same, or I can have it look uh, like something different. I can style it appropriately. I can position things uh, differently. And the way you publish is through a specific action. I mentioned the ability to export via XML, PDF, and HTML. I'm going to show you an example of PDF in this case. I won't go through these options right now. Uh, publishing uh, and exporting content and, and through some of this, the conversion process is all done on the server. Uh, in this case, I have the ability to execute that server process from the client. It generates this PDF document in real time, so whatever the content I have here, it will generate it. Uh, and in this case, it's creating a PDF document that I chose to display in the browser. I could have saved it locally as well. If you look at the format here, you can see it's very similar to the format that I have in my sample document. And I've taken some liberties to change some of the styling just to sort of show you that I can. In this case, it, this, each page has a header. Uh, it includes the chapter title. So that's generated automatically for me. I don't have to do that. Uh, it has the same numbering. One thing you may notice here is that the numbering is different from here, and there's a reason for that, and I'll show you when I take this content and embed it in a larger document how this numbering is updated accordingly. Um, every page has uh, a footer, it has our company logo, there is a page number in the lower right, some copyright information here on the left. Again, what I try to do is just emulate the document that I I uh, was working from. And this is the entire document as it was authored, again, based on all the formatting uh, that is maintained centrally and the content that I, I had at any given time. Okay, so that's one chapter, but I wanted to create an entire document here. So let me show you. Um, a different document that um, references all the chapters in this particular example. In this case, uh, I've broken down at a higher level into a main title, a subtitle. Uh, I've included what I call uh, a copyright section. Again, this is um, sort of uh, building up a document structure based on uh, the sample that I have here. This copyright information is being pulled from a separate document. And I did that, um, one, because uh, I want to reuse this. If I use this tool to create other documentation in our system, I want to have the same copyright data in all of them, and I want to manage it centrally. I have a table of contents, which is uh, dynamically generated. And then I have each individual section that uh, I've authored, including the one that I just showed you called creating content. If you notice now, uh, this the numbering uh, is is correct with respect to the sample document that I've showed you. So, uh, creating content chapter is is chapter three um, in my sample here, and it's certainly uh, numbered chapter three. And all the various sections and subsections are updated uh, accordingly. Okay, so. Two other things that I want to show you real quick because I think they're uh, relevant to this type of exercise. I mentioned that this copyright information document is a separate document. And uh, anything that is reused is versioned independently or is managed uh, independently. So in this particular example, I've got an out of date copyright. So if I go back to uh, my main uh, search grid here, you can see this is the uh, copyright document. I'm going to go ahead and version that. Most likely you'll have a workflow and life cycle associated with how you manage change in your environment. In this case, I'm just doing it manually. 
So I'm going to open that copyright document. It's just the copyright information I showed you. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this, and I'm going to update the uh, the dates here so that they reflect uh, the current date. Oops. All right, and I will then uh, go ahead and save that. Now I'm back on my document here. Now if I refresh. It's telling me that this document, this information that I embedded, uh, is now out of date. And I know that because uh, we style it based on this red dotted border here. And if I place the cursor over the, the, the element in the tree here, it tells me that uh, a new version of this particular document exists. If I right click on it, or if I lock it first rather, and I right click on that, I have the option to either update this document with the latest version, I can view it, uh, I can ignore it, and I can ignore all changes to any version of the current. In other words, if I always want the same um, reference data, no matter how it changes, I can do so. In this case, I'm just going to say update the latest, and you can see that now the version with the updated date exists in this document now. If I publish this, um, I, will ha I want to save. If I publish this to PDF, I will have the entire document content, including everything that's referenced and generated in this uh, the document that I'm showing here. Again, I am referencing all individual chapters. They really aren't part of this document. They're referenced, although if you look at it in the editor, editor it looks like it's one particular document. And there you have it. There is every section. Um, with all of its content accordingly. Okay, we've got four minutes remaining. I, I, I did want to show you some other things, but I think I'm, I'm going to have to uh, skip that for today uh, so that we can have at least a few minutes here to talk about your questions. And uh, before I do that real quick, let me just talk about um, some enhancements that we're planning. Right now, we're actively uh, developing the ability to add search and find within documents and the ability to compare uh, separate versions of documents side by side. Uh, beyond that, we'll be uh, extending that functionality for a graphical or a red redlining comparison. We're adding the ability to, to author in multiple languages. Uh, we'll be adding visual collaboration with some enhanced review and markup. And we'll be adding the ability to embed uh, generated graphics based on 3D visualization. OK. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Make sure to enter in any questions you might have into the Q&A panel after seeing that demonstration. We have a few submitted questions now, so I'm going to get into those. Um, in the tree, is there a way to identify whether a piece is referenced or not referenced? Yes. So if you look here, uh, every bit of referenced uh, information has the same icon. And this, we use the same icon as the, the technical document here. So anything with this icon is a referenced uh, piece of information. If I right click on it and say view item, it'll take me directly to the content that I'm referencing. All right. Does Innovator support DITA XML, D-I-T-A XML? So DITA, yep. Um, everything within this system is based on XML schema. So if you define a DITA uh, XML schema in, in the configuration, then you, your authors will have uh, the equivalent editing experience in that they're only able to place the nodes that are uh, specified by that particular schema. And it's the same true with any XML schema. All right, so this is a two-part question. Are we able to change the layout styles to create different layouts? Can we populate data from other areas of ARIS like product specs? Yes. So. I don't have an example in this, this particular version here, but I, I want to keep it um, here for context. I have the ability through what we call content, content generators to um, associate with uh, particular nodes in your, your XML schema. When the user creates them, 
it executes a bit of um, uh, logic which you can uh, create for automating the generation of, uh, of content. We do that, for example, with our talk. Uh, in this case, this is a, um, rather than referring to other parts of the uh, other business items within Innovator, it's referring to the current document. So as I change elements in here and I regenerate the talk, it will uh, generate uh, equivalent functionality. Okay. Is there a way to look up all the places where a note of content has been used? Yes. Everything um, in uh, Innovator that is referenced is a uh, relationship. So I can use the structure browser to identify all content that it is relating. Uh, likewise, when I refer to an in content that is being included, I can look at all the documents that are including it. Okay. Related to DITA, could you use an external editor like Oxygen? So um, it's, it's a good question. We get it uh, quite often. That involves the ability to both import the XML, export it, and then re-import. We do have some functionality that allows you to import. Uh, and I've, I've showed you the way that we would export the content. What we need to do is tailor the re-importing of the content um, where you edit externally to get it back into our system. That's a little bit more complicated. All right. Thank you, Kevin. We have a few more questions coming in, but we're running out of time. So thank you for all who submitted your questions. I apologize for the ones that we're not going to get to today, but we will be sure to follow up with you. I'm going to leave you today with what is upcoming. On December 14th, we will be going beyond engineering with the ARIS PLM platform. The following demo, after the first of the year, on January 18th, we will be discussing how to jumpstart your digital transformation with the ARIS PLM platform. Again, you can register for upcoming webinars and view any past webinars at www.aris.com slash demo series. We would love for you all to join the ARIS Open Community. We've got blogs, knowledge bases with a lot of good information, forums, community projects for you to access and contribute to when ready. Be sure to follow ARIS on social. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, where we are looking to share with the community industry-related news and articles, latest information on ARIS news, products, assets, and more. You may have heard of the Forrester PLM Wave report that just came out. If you're curious to learn more about leaders in the PLM Wave, you can go to our ARIS homepage to get your complimentary copy. Finally, be sure to save the date. ACE US 2018 is well underway here at ARIS, we will be coming to Indianapolis, Indiana this March from the 20th to the 22nd, and we would love to see you all there and hear your feedback. ACE is the perfect opportunity to network with the PLM community, ARIS employees, partners, and more. With that, we thank you for joining us today and look forward to having you on next time. Thank you and have a good day.